be here and to be able to stand up in front of all you and, and tell my story. And this is where it's going to be um, a little bit different because it's, it's been fascinating keynotes out there. Um, I really want to get across what it's like to be a store owner and now actually building websites for, for our clients. So just show of hands, who owns an e-commerce site here? Quite a few. And any um, website builders, e-commerce builders? Brilliant. And any developers? Okay, cool, cool. No, hopefully there's some inspiration here of the good work which you do that help, help myself. So um, pretty much today I want to talk about how we actually um, had an idea of creating an e-commerce site, a baby boutique website, um, ittybitty.co.uk. Um, how we managed to get 100,000 followers within a year. Um, how we became the UK's number one. How we've able to take that, that good work and actually create our own agency and helping businesses do more. So it's quite an incredible story. So it's an absolute honour and privilege that you're willing to, to listen, listen to me talk about this. So give you a little bit of background about myself. Obviously you mentioned about sales and marketing. I uh, worked for big companies in the UK and the previous company. Um, I used to travel quite some distance. It used to be equivalent to 120 miles. It would take me three hours to drive to work. Um, in total round trips, an hour and a half to get there, hour and a half to get back, which it took its time, especially as we had a little baby, a little daughter, Darcy. She's now two, and when she was growing up, uh, as a new dad, it was quite heartbreaking because I would wake up, get ready to go to work, leave at seven, and she, Darcy's still in bed, go to work, come home, and by the time I get home at 7 p.m., she's in bed. So as a new father, it was quite hard because I didn't really spend that time with my daughter. And um, as the months gone on, it kind of makes you think, and I think a lot of people have these ideas, like, you know what, I want to move away from the nine to five job. I want to move away or start my own business or let's look at other jobs or other opportunities. There must be more to this. Um, and that's been a big driving force. And without sounding too cheesy, WooCommerce allowed me to change my life to this extent. So <clears throat> what it was is a case of um, you know, we, we, we've always had an idea, let's start an e-commerce business, because my background is sales and marketing, I can do all the front bit, I can do all the sexy stuff. And with my wife, she's a buyer, she worked for a UK company, um, the equivalent to, uh, as the Walmart over here in the US, with children's hair accessories. So when you go into Walmart and you see all the kids' accessories, it'd be my wife's job to actually build the range build the colours, work with China, negotiate with the prices, to actually get the product for Walmart willing, based on her judgement, to buy it and then put it into the shops. So, you know, she's been ex well, incredible with, without all of that, with Halloween, with Christmas, with all the different seasons. So we've always had an idea, hang on, you're good at that part, buying, sourcing products, give the products to me, let me just make it look sexy and then we'll sell it. Let's, let's do an e-commerce business. So we've always had that in mind. So. With my wife, um, she loves spending time on her phone, Instagram, looking at pictures, looking at boutiques, looking at Facebook, and she'll be look, look, Rick, look at this dress. Do you like this dress? She asked me for fashion advice, and I was like, yeah, it's a lovely dress, darling. Um, look at these shoes. Do you, do you like them? And I'm like, yeah, 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 it's nice and stuff. So she would always spend time on her phone looking at these boutiques. Now. <clears throat> It, it, I realised something wasn't quite right there because she'll see these, like, say, shoes or dresses, and then it's a case of, right, she's got to engage in a conversation with that social media owner. So, like, hi, oh, yeah, do you have them in a size 8 or size UK 6? Then she's got to wait, and then she get a reply back. So, yeah, we've got a size 6. Okay, well, do you have them in silver? And you've got to wait and go back and forth. And why... This, this is happening like whilst I'm watching the football or soccer, as you call it. Is, um, I find it's, how can we trust these people? It didn't seem right. I didn't feel trustworthy because it got to a stage where, right, I want to buy those shoes, it's £25. And then they say, right, OK, can you pay that money in my PayPal account? And I'm like, this does not seem right or confident. You know, you, you've got these people who's got this massive following, lovely pictures of girls doing selfies with their clothes and shoes, but you've got to trust someone to pay into their PayPal account, and it didn't feel right. And I was like, you know what, I think we're missing an idea there, and it's obviously a website you can go to, like Amazon or eBay, secure website and check out. And I'm thinking, with these, this sudden surge of online boutique shopping, 
it's missing a website. So by, by all means, with my wife, she loves spending money, so um, she's brought a lot of clothes, a lot of shoes, and they've all turned up. And then they turn up and they, it's like they've just came from China. <laughs> it's just, there's no effort, no care, no nothing. And it's think, you know what, I like that experience. I think we could do that, but we could do it better. So why don't we open up a women's boutique website? It's what everyone else is doing, but on Instagram and Facebook, but let's send them people to the website. They can go and check out Securely Pay with PayPal, and we can build a following. And sure, this, this is surely got to work. So that's kind of, that was the route which we went down. So we was all fully prepared to get that all set up until Darcy was born. And as, she was, as the months went on, we realized all the money we were spending on me or Kate wasn't a, no more. We are spending all our money on Darcy. So now with my wife, who loves spending my money, it's a case that she's spending clothes for Darcy. So we're buying shoes and clothes for Darcy. We're buying, I can't remember last time I brought anything new. I love gadgets and technology and no, we don't buy it no more. It's all for Darcy. So that's when we realized, hang on a moment, if we're buying all these clothing and products for our baby, surely loads of other parents out there are doing that. And that's where um, we started to change our idea of a women's boutique fashion uh, website. So being from Brighton, we're renowned for the lanes and the lanes are home to like real boutique shopping. So real big designer brands at really affordable prices, uh, unaffordable prices, should I say. Um, so as a new parent, and it's all new to me, we would buy clothes from shops like Primark or supermarkets or say Gap Kids, H&M Kids, Zara Kids. What, what, most parents would buy their clothes from. Then you've got the other scale, the boutiques being from Brighton, but dresses or shoes or baby clothes, we're talking over equivalent to $200, which, you know, as a new parent, that's a lot of money, firstly, and secondly, they're going to grow out of it in a couple of months. So we thought there was a gap in the market. So instead of being expensive or cheap, let's have something in between. So could we have boutique style clothing but at affordable prices. We thought, well, let's give it a go because no one else was doing it, no one in the UK. So we thought, well, perfect, let's, let's do that then. So as the days and months would go on, it would be a case of the one night where the idea happened and we made it happen was, I was watching, um, I follow football, soccer, Brighton Hove Albion, there was on TV and Kate was there on her phone and said, right, Britt, we're going to set up a business. I'm like, yeah, 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 I was, I mean, I'm being honest, obviously live stream here, it's Kate's idea, but it's a case of, um, I was like, yeah, 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 whatever, let's, let's do it. She says, yep, we're going to set up a baby boutique. Yep, okay, da, 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 da. What should we call it then? So Kate was coming up with ideas. And if I'm honest, I wasn't really listening to my wife at that point. I was more interested in if we catch up because we was losing at that point, one nil. And um, she said names and stuff, and she said itty bitty. I was like, itty bitty, yeah, that would do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, I was more interested in the game. So the best advice I can give anyone would be a case of, I realise a happy wife is a happy life. So the very next day, I registered ittybitty.co.uk. Just to, the honest truth is, just, yeah, I've done it, I've done my job, send up. So we got that domain name registered, so we thought, right, we're doing this. Let's really set this up. And the goal was, in the UK, we had to pay childcare fees. And they were about 500 to 600 pounds a month. It's quite costly for two days a week. So the goal was, we had our jobs, so that we would set up this little e-commerce site business, and then it would just cover Darcy's fees. That's all we wanted. Um, you know, as simple as that. So, right, domain, domain name registered. Let's set up a website. So I looked at different platforms out there. So from Presta Shop, uh, Big Commerce, we looked at an uh, open cart, Shopify, and they've all had their pros and cons, and obviously we looked at WooCommerce. However, there were three things I was looking for the most, okay? Can anyone guess what those three things I specifically wanted out of my e-commerce solution? Can anyone guess? Payments, yeah, no, good, good offer. I want something good payment options. Anything else? Even, sorry? Templates. Good templates. Interesting, it was it, something I was looking at, templates to make my job easy, but it wasn't that. And flexibility, it's um, partly true, yes, partly true. The, the three things I wanted was definitely price. 
as a new business owner and something on the side, I wanted it cheap. I'm not going to mm -hmm. lie, I wanted it as free as possible. Mm -hmm. And Shopify has wonderful solutions and I can see that we can start off cheaply, but in my head I want to make this grow and I've got to give all my money to them. And other platforms were quite difficult and weren't flexible enough. So I wanted cheap. So WooCommerce was free. So perfect, let's use WooCommerce. Um, the other two, and this is where, when people ask me this question, they're quite surprised. One of the goals which I might, this website had to be was absolutely mobile friendly and look absolutely beautiful on a mobile phone. The reason why, because if I'm seeing my wife on her phone and all her friends on their phone and they're buying and stuff, it had to be mobile friendly first. Um, looking at the solutions, it was clear WooCommerce was perfect for this and it pr pretty much now powers about 98% of our transactions all through mobile. So when we designed the website, if I'm honest, we didn't really bother too much about the desktop. It was all about mobile first, um, because that's where the transactions were. The third thing, which I wanted it to be, and this is the bit which people, when I ask the question, no one brings up, is it had to be fully optimized for SEO. So my goal, my strategy was, is I want the website to be SEO friendly. So I want to be page number one. I want to be number one. I know it ain't going to happen overnight, but I want it to grow. So it was my long-term goal. So if I, once I get there, I'm there. Sure, we can chuck out pay-per-click and Facebook ads and all the other stuff along the way, but it had to have that element of SEO. And that was clear whereby WooCommerce delivered that. It was a case of um, Google, Yahoo and Bing could read the pages. It was easy to index is um, they can trust it, rich snippets, that all works lovely. So that was the route. So based on that, I took WooCommerce. Bear in mind, I'm not a developer. Um, I'm not a designer. I'm not a coder or anything. I'm just a normal guy who just had an idea. Let's set up a website. Let's see how hard it was. So we did. So I spent the next couple of weeks just designing and building a website. And in my background in sales and marketing, it, I believe, and a lot of these are my opinions, and. You know, I can only speak of what, or where I came from and where it's going. It's a case of, I wasn't bothered about a logo. So we went on Fiverr, got paid someone $5, give me a logo. Because I believe it didn't matter. What I really believe was the elements of, obviously, being mobile friendly, super fast, reliable, and SEO on there as well, and free. So we got, free, we got a logo done, we got a pink design done, we put it all together, and therefore Kate started to source the products. One key thing which I wanted to help with the mobile element was that the pictures had to look amazing. It's got to be in a way whereby um, with, with Kate, you'll be like, oh, Rick, look at this dress. I wanted customers to be telling their husbands or boyfriends or their friends, hey, look at this. Look, we've got to get this. This is adorable. So photography had to be great. So Kate, she'd done a lot of work sourcing products and actually get a list of products, a mixture of uh, baby girls' dresses and shoes and baby grows. And um, we focus on girls purely because of we've got a daughter and all the clothes we were buying or looking to buy or what's not out there, we thought, hang on, let's just match that up and put it on our website because surely other parents are going to have the same issues. So we've got the solution. So we've got a website together. We've got it all registered. We've got products on there. Um, you know, being a business owner or new business entrepreneur, I set the prices. Um, so, for example, with our first sale, it was these little booties. And I thought, right, okay, we don't want to be too cheap. We want to, don't want to be too expensive. Kind of in between. So we set up about £25, which was kind of like almost in the middle. And I thought, this is it. Right, let's launch the website. Website's launched. And then we waited and waited and waited and had no sales. So I was like, okay, right, this, this wasn't meant to happen. This wasn't a part of the script. So um, we, we thought, hang on a moment. We've got a really good looking website. We've got amazing photography and great products. We think our pricing's okay. We're not over there, we're not over there, we're kind of over there. Um, we made no sales. So, and this has been a quite amazing because I think a lot of people I speak with, they're like, Rick, I've got to that point. And you think of all that idea and all that effort, you've kind of like, ah, oh, what's it been for? So. There was a moment of genius, again, from my wife, um, is that where she was in a buyer, she was like, hang on, Rick, when we started this out, we didn't want to be cheap, we didn't want to be too expensive, so we want to be in the middle. So, Rick, all we've got to do is just go over a little bit slightly. So not £25, £15. There's still a massive profit margin there. 
change our prices. I was like, change our prices? Yeah, but you, you go on these other websites and they're charging a lot more. No, change our prices. So again, going back to a happy wife is a happy life. Um, the next day I changed the prices. Actually, sorry, the next day and then going into the evening, we updated the products. We only had about 20 products on there, so nothing major. Changed the prices. We um, knocked up a Facebook page and we thought, get some of the pictures, put it on Facebook page, and incredibly, within the hour, we had our first sale. I was like, this is amazing. I just I could not believe it. Um, my wife, she will still go on about this today, actually, because of, you know, because of that change, it's just transformed everything. So we had our first sale. Then we was like, well, now what do we do? How do we send it? And this is where WooCommerce was definitely the right platform for us and from all the great work developers do. We need to have a plugin to be able to do like invoices. Okay, well, how are we going to ship it? We'll have to go to the post office and package it up. Because these are the elements which we didn't think about. All I was interested in was, can we just get a website together, put it out there, get people to buy, and we'll worry about that later. So um, we did. So after that first sale, shortly afterwards, we had another sale come in. And these are these little booties. and. This is incredible. It's like, wow, we've made like, not a great deal, but 30 pounds in the space of like two and a half hours. So this is really doing well to allow us to pay for Darcy's um, uh, nursing, nursery care. So from this, as, as it, bear in mind, it's a side project to pay for, for um, nursery fees. I said to Kate, I said, look, we're gonna take it seriously once we made 250 quid, we'll take it seriously. So literally, as the week, as the days went on in the weeks, by the end of the week, we made 250 pounds. I was like, okay, right, maybe let's take it seriously. You know, like once we get to 500 pounds, okay? Again, a couple of weeks later, we got to 500 pounds within that month. So again, at stage that, we're on to a good thing. So I think, right, okay, look, once we made a thousand pounds of sales, we'll register the company, do it properly. Bear in mind, I'm not a business owner. I have no idea about setting up companies or anything, or tax or, anything like that. But by the end of the month, we had a thousand pounds worth of sales through this website, which we put together, chucked on a logo, but the core element with WooCommerce to be mobile friendly, it was secure. Um, it's just changed, changed the, the whole structure of it. Um, it was just amazing, absolutely amazing to see and stuff. So the very next day in March, we registered the company. So we set up this company, Itty Bitty Boutique. We effectively, we got my full-time job, Kate's full-time job, and we got this side little website which is paying for Dar Darcy's nursery fees. So, well, let's carry it on. Let's get more products, put products on there. Um, let's put it out to market through social channels, and away we go. Now, during this period, unfortunately, Kate was made redundant, so she lost her job. So the company she worked for was no more. So if you imagine that that income and my income together with this nice little project, that was gone. So it was left with just my income. I was like, whoa, okay. So it actually put a bit of pressure on us to make this little idea actually bigger than what it could be. And can I make it bigger than what it can be? Um, so it was quite hard, quite tough. And so what we did, we just stuck to our formula. So we're really proud that we managed to get, well, excess of 100,000 Facebook fans we done that within a year. And um, the way we done this actually broke all the rules of everything I read about marketing, social media and Facebook marketing. Because I've read all the books, I've got listened to the podcasts, and what they say is like, create engaging content. So create a story that people are gonna search for, then they're gonna go on your website, then they're gonna love your website, and then they're gonna add into your email list, and they're gonna buy your, no, sorry. It's, I partly agree with that philosophy, but I can't, especially with the UK audience and the way us Brits are, we're not that um, forthcoming. So what I believed was, spin it, let's just show our customers on social media our products. Here's this pink dress, and that's what we did. So we just posted our products, the title of the product, the product, and the link to take them through to our website. And it was just incredible to see parents and comments like, oh my God, I need this life, I need this dress in my life, or this is Millie's little birthday dress. And we, already we're having this like, community of people just talking about our products. It's just insane, it's incredible to see. It was quite overwhelming. And stories, and then we got messages coming through, like, hi, do you do this in a bigger size? Or have you got this in this color or that color? 
So we stuck with that formula. So, and you'll see if you go onto our website, ittybitty.co.uk, and follow us on Facebook, you'll see all our posts are actually products. And it's that same formula because that worked for us where other clients, it's engaging marketing and inbound marketing, it, that didn't work for us. And it goes back to, and I think back of the formula, whereby it's a case of mobile friendly, so they're on their phones, they see the product, and it makes them buy it. So we grew the followers that way. Now, from this, this is where WooCommerce and developers has helped us so much so, because when I was going to work, it was a case of, you know, I started off taking little carrier bags of parcels. I would have to go to the post office. I'd have to type in everybody's name and address, get the stamp and hand it over. And it used to be fine because we were only doing a handful of orders and that grew and grew. It got to a stage where I was taking sacks. So I was taking my big drive to work. I got these sacks and basically walking them down to the post office and then spending pretty much my hour lunch break typing in names and stuff, self-service, and send them off. It was incredible. Um, and that's where WooCommerce, again, the right platform for us because we linked into other systems. Because of this, Royal Mail, they've issued us with a license so we can print our own postage. Slightly different to what you can do anyway online, so we can print on demand. And it used to be a case of we look back and evenings, we'll have our dinner and prepare parcels we get to a stage where we had so many, we were actually preparing on a Saturday. So instead of having a Chinese or Indian takeaway, we were actually parcels all lined out, right, let's do this order, do this order. So it was actually taking over our lives. Um, and we wanted ways to streamline it and change it. So from this, again, with apps and extensions and all the good work, which we realized, again, going back to WooCommerce was the right platform, we've added plugins to make our lives easier, quicker, faster. Um, now it's gone to a stage where Royal Mail love us, they come and collect from us. Um, we've got cheaper rates and it's all these other elements where people don't think about when running a business, because we didn't. I was interested, will people buy these baby clothes? So, so much and so, we grew, grew and grew the business and it got to a stage whereby um, we wanted to add on other products and services. So for example, um, we call them push shares or strollers, I think we call it over here in the US. Uh, so we've done a partnership with my baby. And the way we were perceived, they were like, well, yeah, we'd love to work with you. Which was like, well, this is really cool. This is really amazing. So we started selling these strollers on the website. So now we've got these boutique baby clothes. Now we've got strollers. What else could we do? So we, um, we were bigger than what we were. And that's all about perception. So we approached a company, and we're one of the exclusive stockists of Disney boutique dresses. So in the UK, you can only buy them from Harrods, um, House of Frasier, a few other websites, and us. Now, what they don't know, which they will do now, is that they don't realize Itty Bitty is run by me and my wife on our third bedroom. The way we're perceived is just bigger because we've got an audience of 100,000 followers. We've got a really nice website, secure website. Disney and through our partner brand, they're like, yep, sell these dresses on your website. So it's open doors which we could not imagine was possible, absolutely could not imagine what was possible. So we we're absolutely thrilled that, again, going back to starting off with 20 products, we're now selling strollers, buggies, now we're selling products from Disney. Um, about a month ago in the UK, we have The Apprentice and the runner up picked up the phone, hey Rick, do you want to start selling products? These like Starbucks inspired sippy cups. Yeah, sure, let's put them on. We stuck with the same marketing methods through social media. We sold them all out within a, two days. And it was just amazing. So now when we started the website, I would approach people like, come on please, we want your products. Come on please, trust us. It's the other way around now. I have companies from the US email us every day. They want us to stock these um, dresses, some of the Brands are through um, uh, sons and daughters from celebrities, which they look amazing, and it'll be amazing, but really it doesn't go back to the ethos of, hang on, boutique prices, you're over there, it's not really for our audience. So it's been really quite overwhelming how that, this little idea has just changed our lives, so into an extent whereby we're, we're, we're covering Darcy's nursery fees. So the company I was working for was, um, obviously full-time, making that journey. And the idea would have been, you know what, if I leave, 
and obviously Kate out of job, maybe we could do this as a full-time business and make this income even bigger and better. So back in January, I left my company, the old company I worked for. So in January, effectively, we've had no full-time wage from Kate, no full-time wage from me, and all we had was this little itty bitty baby boutique. And from January, if I'm honest, apart from that, we had no income. And it's scary because you're like, whoa, you've given up a good job um, with all the benefits. Um, you're sacrificing the time for traveling. So I've got more time to spend with Darcy, my daughter, see her grow up um, for this risk of this idea. So one thing which was clear is that because of the success of this, in January, we set up Netto of Hove, a web studio marketing agency. So we help businesses do more online so we can design websites, build websites, build e-commerce with WooCommerce websites and SEO. Because we believe that when we started Itty Bitty, we had this idea, there was no one out there willing to help me, no one. You, you, in the UK, we have the banks willing to say, yeah, we'll give you funding, go and set up your business. Yeah, we'll give you funding if you wait two years and you do a business plan and la di da da. Um, to build a website, the companies being from Brighton, they wanted thousands and thousands of pounds. I didn't have that, I didn't want that. I just wanted someone to help me or give me some sort of direction or, or something from that. So it was a case of, you know what, let's set up our own web studio marketing agency and let's help people, people like me um, and big companies do more online. And this has been incredible because the success of our agency, bear in mind I started in January, we're already Google partners, we're accredited with Bing, we've um, passed numerous inbound marketing um, accreditations at HubSpot, even though we don't use them, I partly agree with their philosophy. Um, we work, we've got a Woo rank expert, so we've passed all the accreditations on here. And I think, and what's been incredible is that when we we'll go to meetings, they want to have a chat with our agency and another agency and another agency, we've won so many businesses because of Itty Bitty, and everyone says to me, said, Rick, you know what? You're the only agency who can back up what you say. Because we had this website which had zero following. We've got 100,000 100, followers within a year. We can prove our SEO worth. We can prove our expertise. And like, Rick, you know what? You're hired. And being from Brighton, there's also lots of big, big, big agencies which employ hundreds and hundreds of staff. Um, but they're choosing us, they're choosing me because they can see our worth. So it's amazing when I speak to other agencies, like, you know what, could we do this? Could we actually set up our own little side business to then go into a meeting and actually prove to the client you're trying to pitch to that you can deliver on that? It sounds amazing, but no one's doing it. So I come along and we just win in business. So we've got multi-million pound clients willing to work with us because we can prove our worth. We've got one-man bands, we've got makeup artists, toastmasters, we've got um, a mixture of pharmaceutical companies, we've got medical companies, we've got sports, we've got YouTubers, we've got so mixture because it's a case of we can prove what we can do. So it's just for any agency owners, it's just to think, can there be something which you could do as a little website, side project, that you can actually grow and actually help make you win more business? Because we are competing with the big boys, um, which is absolutely privileged, and we wouldn't be into that stage if it wasn't for Itty Bitty and actually getting that set up. So with, with that all in mind, it's a case of, we think back to how Itty Bitty was and how it is now and how it's growing. And, you know, it's incredible because this month we thought we'd try something different. Let's start shipping online. Let's, you know, instead of restricting us to the UK, can we send these products internationally? So again, using WooCommerce, we've got the website adapted. So we thought, right, excellent. We've got that adapted. So now we want to market it. And our main marketing, apart from SEO, is a case of Facebook. Because with Facebook, and this was the difference I picked up with Kate was shopping through Instagram, it's kind of changed now, but she would like go through, see a picture, then she's engaging in conversation. But if she wants to go on a website, she may need to click on the bio, then the bio to go to the website, and then you realize the website is made by one of these other providers, and it's clunky, and it's not really nice at all. So with this, we've stuck with Facebook, and then we just stick with the simple formula, show the product, show the title, may have a little quote, love hearts emojis, everyone loves emojis, and send it through to the website. So we've done adverts, 
for international market. So for right, what countries? Um, let's pick Sweden, we pick the USA, uh, we pick Canada, um, New Zealand and Australia. No reference, I just thought they'll do. So we've done that, so we run Facebook ads, we've done it for a week, and literally within that week we had international orders. Now when they come to our website, and this is where I'm really excited as a business owner, and, and this is where there's so much more I can do, it's all UK. So even if you, if you went on there now, you're gonna see UK pounds, but we're getting people willing to pay in pounds. So we haven't adapted the website at all to make it dollars or euros or yen, it's all in pounds. But people are buying from us. So it's already great here to see that we can grow our business to be able to let's adapt it and show the dollars for the US market. Let's show the yen for the Japanese and the euro for the Europeans. Um, it got to a stage whereby, and for us to learn about the shipping, so we've adapted the shipping. And it's been incredible in the USA because loads of people love our strollers. We do some really, really pink and girly over the top strollers and travel systems. So I presume the feedback we get is that it's not really over here, but these are super girly and people are willing to pay 300 pounds for the actual product and 200 pounds to ship it over here. So they're spending 500 pounds. So gone from the days where we're doing like 15 pounds and 25 pounds, we're doing a lot of 500 pound orders. And again, having that to, to work with a partner to then ship it over to the US. So it's a case of, uh, with WooCommerce, it gave us that platform, um, but there's still so much more we can do on there as well, on there. So in summary, it's a case of, as cheesy as it is, itty bitty has changed our lives because no longer am I doing that journey. I'm actually seeing my daughter grow up. Um, it was quite scary having Kate lose her job um, having no income, but itty bitty just grew with that. It was a case of, for me to leave my previous job and start my own web studio, my own marketing agency. Um, I don't have a degree in marketing. Um, um, I, you know, I don't have, say, huge experience. I'm not a coder, I'm not a developer or anything like that. It's just a case of, I would see things that other studios were doing and agencies were doing, which I thought, hang on, it shouldn't be like that. And it's really quite refreshing to see because listening to the keynotes yesterday, some of the elements already mentioned, I'm like, I'm doing that. But these people have had years of experience. I'm like, wow, I must be onto something good. So for example, it's a case of um, being very British and the way we are, we would rather send you an email than actually go up to you and say, hello, how are you doing? We're so British like that. And I see so many agencies would rather Email client, hi, look, yeah, what do you think of this? Rather than pick up the phone and say, hello, how are you doing? I would see so many other agencies not even willing to go down and meet with the client. So if it's a pizza restaurant, they won't even go down there and sample the pizza, see what it's like, see what it tastes like to, to understand their business. So it's refreshing to hear keynotes of successful agencies already doing that, which it, again, it reassures me, hang on, I must be onto a good thing here as, as we grow. We also see um, um, a lot of other agencies out there, which obviously is the communication. So many people don't communicate. And one of the things which I saw was a case of in my previous jobs, a salesperson will sell you, come and buy this website, yeah, yeah, we'll make you number one Google, yeah, it's five grand, whatever. Then they go and have a chat with a designer and then the designer will design it, design some more, design some more, give them up to 10, designs, it's, you know, crazy. Here's 10 designs, pick one, anyone. Then it goes to the developer, and then it goes back and forth, and then it goes off to sign off, then it goes to someone to support them. And the previous company, or what I could see for other agencies, there's so many things flawed because it took too long. It was problems from that end to that end. And actually, at the end of the day, it's all about that customer. So my philosophy, and again, you know, I'm not a designer, coder, or anything like that, was let's rewrite the rule, rule book. Let's make it so that my staff, my employee, or me, so if I'm meeting with a client, I'm gonna sell you what you want because I understand what you want. I'm gonna design it, I'm gonna build it, I'm gonna code it, and I'm gonna support you. I'm not gonna give you 10 million designs to pick from, I'm gonna build it live on the platform because I want the website to be liquid so it looks beautiful on mobile, tablet, and desktop. So that was my idea. I had no idea if it would work, but it has. And they're like, well, Rick, what do you mean you've got something together within that short space of time? My last company, I waited six months. 
The longest client said they waited a year. They waited a year for their website, and even then it wasn't working. And some other clients I've worked with, which unfortunately they signed up before they had met with us to do the SEO, they've been waiting, I think it's seven months for a website. And I just cannot believe why. And it seems to go back to this process. So as an outsider who wants to start my own agency, let's rewrite the rule book. And again, that's helped me to win more and more business because I understand what they want, I communicate with them, and it's allowed me to grow. So it's just ways to help existing agencies kind of get more from the client and understand more as well. As well as communication, every four to six weeks, I go out there and I meet with them. Regardless if I've got an update or not, I'm always on the phone, I've got an idea for you. See that e-commerce site? Why don't we do abandoned cart? Let's do this. Let's do coupons, let's do a pop-up, let's do this, or let's work with your EPOS system. Just new ideas, because they just love it, um, because you're interested in their success. And it's amazing, because just all this idea is now grown to, well, go to network at events, go and speak to Rick, he's got this idea, he'll look after you. And again, these big name companies, which they want to work with me and with our studio, is unbelievable. Again, goes back to this whole little idea of Itty Bitty. So when we had the idea of starting Itty Bitty and been success of an e-commerce site, that was one thing, but now I've taken that to be an agency, to help grow, um, help other people, help other businesses. I was speaking earlier, we've got an incentive because I see, and again, you may have clients like this as well, they may have a retail shop here, they're struggling, or maybe not struggling, but do they have a website? Can we get them to move over to start selling online? And effectively open their business up from there to the whole of the country and internationally. So we've just created grants. Here, have 500 pounds off. It's an e-commerce grant. We want to get you start selling online. 500 pounds free? Oh, lovely, Let, tell me more. So it goes back to itty bitty. When I started out, I wanted to be cheap or free. And that's the thing, there's no one out there willing to help out. So by creating a grant, um, to be able to help kind of dangle that carrot to bring them in, that worked as an agency on there as well. So again, going back to Itty Bitty has helped, helped, I guess, the way I think to run my own agency. Bear in mind, I'm, I'm, I'm the new kid on the block here. You know, I don't have years of experience or anything like that. It was just a way of an idea which I think, you know what, why not? Because there's so many in Brighton, so many in London. I've got to compete with these big players. I need to be different, I've got to be different. And that was a case of it's transformed my success and it's allowed me to grow. Obviously here I am today talking about a story. So a few points just to summarize really is a case of um, WooCommerce has changed my life effectively. This whole idea of running a baby boutique business, you know, from our, web, from our third bedroom, very messy third bedroom. That's why we don't have slides because you don't, want, you don't want to see the better, it's an um, absolute mess. Um, to now, to get to see it to grow, using social media, we stuck with Facebook, and it works, and from all the stuff I would read, and actually, you know what, it didn't work for us, and actually think, let's try it differently, and the persistence to make that happen, and to actually see it grow, and I, I tell you, it still gets me to this day, like I was just reading yesterday, whereby parents would send us pictures of their little daughter and their little shoes which they got from us. And they left like, it's so heartwarming that real people engaging with us, even though they think that we're this big company, but we're just parents ourselves. And it's from that experience that has led us to help other parents. And then going back from a keynote yesterday, it's amazing actually how much power we have in a sense whereby being a new dad, um, children, and uh, ever since Darcy was born, I've gone so emotional now. Honestly, I can't, can't stop crying over silly little things because it takes me there into the moment. And it's, um, it's got to a stage where charity, that with our audience of parents, we can actually work with charities and actually give something back. Now, as a new business, you know, sure, we can donate a pound from every purchase to that, but it was more than that. It's when we can do announcements. So we speak with so many different children's charities, and we're not, we're not biased. It doesn't matter if it's one or the other, because the way we see it is for the greater good. So we can say, hey, let us send an announcement to our audience of parents with children and family. And the fact is, we would do that through email marketing or through social media posts. 
And the only kind of feedback we get is from that charity. It's like, Rick, we cannot believe it. We've had X amount of donations come through just because of our little message. And it's just overwhelming. So all these things you don't think about of starting and running and growing a business that just came on board of ourselves. And actually, we've helped touch or changed or implemented actually some good from it all because of WooCommerce. So again, it's super cheesy, I know, I'm so sorry, but it's really these other elements which people don't think about, um, which has really transformed our lives as well as other people for the greater good. So it's a case of going back to if itty bitty, I wouldn't be here today, we wouldn't have an agency growing on there as well. We wouldn't be able to help other businesses grow. So it doesn't matter if a one-man band or a big corporate company, there's loads of ways we can do because we just do things differently on there as well. So, yeah, it's been an incredible journey and it's been amazing to have this opportunity to stand in front of you, you and for you to come and listen to me. This was a new idea, no slides, no you know, keynotes to go through to talk and stuff, but just to see how it would work if someone who had an idea using WooCommerce to stand up in front of you to tell a story and to be able to, to allow you to realise all you store owners, you can make it possible. We're the UK number one, we can SEO baby boutique, baby boutique dresses, we're number one, we get loads of traffic. Um, on that type, we spend about $200 a month on advertising, that's it, and we get orders every day. It's just incredible. Going back to my core of SEO and mobile as a strategy, so any sh shop owners out there, um, you can make it possible beyond your wildest dreams. Like here, this is totally beyond my wildest dreams. And agencies, hopefully that, um, obviously I can inspire you in a way to think about actually maybe setting up your own e-commerce site of something random. I knew nothing about baby clothes. All I was is a dad and Kate would go out shopping to buy clothes for Darcy. I didn't know and I'd done it on purpose out of my comfort zone. So again, to prove that when I was in front of a client, they could clearly understand I don't know nothing about baby clothes, but then they buy into me, buy into the story, buy into the agency and work with us, trust us and recommended us. So we use that as a tool to win business and very quickly. So it could be a way as agencies to think, hang on, you know what, let's knock up a website, let's put it together, a bit of marketing and actually use that as a sales tool to win new business on there as well. For developers, I don't really have much to say, but thank you to all the development work you've done because, again, it allowed to make our lives easier on there as well. So hopefully it gives you some few points just to think about. It, by all means, afterwards at lunch, is a case of come and find me. There's more to the story from here as well, um, whereby I've had previous employers with, uh, you know, where I left my previous company, they tried to bankrupt me twice because they're a bit I've left because they knew I could be successful and I was an asset to them. But it's a case of I had people, um, obviously Kate losing jobs and other, other stuff along the way when, because it's hard running a business. So it's a case of, you know, come and find me, come and have a chat with me. Um, I'm more, more than happy to show you how we can do it and I'm sharing stuff here. So anyone in the UK is going to set up a business, it's fine, it's just I'm here to help and just to give a way to think slightly differently. But no, thank you so much for your time, thank you so much for listening to me and yeah, come and find me, please come and have a chat with me. Brilliant, thank you. Thank you. Actually we... We have five more minutes, yeah, yeah. so oh, you could you could take questions. questions if you'd like. Yeah, so it's an I T T Y B I T T Y dot co dot uk, and when you go onto the website, you realise it's very simple. Not because I'm not a designer, because going back to it's mobile, it needs to be simple. Show the products; it doesn't have to be super sexy on there as well. So. Have an idea, yeah. Please take a look at, at that. Yeah. How do you figure out or how do you stop the product if your product is still warehouse yet or you're dropping or having That's a really good question. We do No, a really good question. We do a mixture of both because what I realized, um, I guess as a husband to Kate in the sense that um, um, with uh, I think um, again it's only my opinion, 
being quite stereotypical. I think it's easier to sell to women because they'll like they buy into it more, especially with baby clothes. And what I realised with the way Kate was shopping was a case of, oh, I need to have that dress. I don't care. I'll wait a week. I'll wait a month. I need to have that dress. So some of the products we actually make to made to order. So we want to create hype. So we said pre-order this dress. So we don't actually have the product in stock. So we get the sale in and then we can make it. But customers were incredibly happy to wait up to six weeks for their shipment. So a mixture of pre-orders. So we're making, as a business, we've got money coming in. Then we can obviously assign the cost and then ship it out. But other products we actually ship in. It's all filled up in our third bedroom on there as well. So it's managed all through WooCommerce. Um, all the products are classes in stock, so it's really easily managed. And we actually use a third party called Vico, whereby it pulls in all the information. And with our raw mail license, we go to the order, and then we can weigh it and ship it, and it prints out the labeling for us. So again, with the development work out there, um, makes our lives easier. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, this is a real good question because um, as a new business owner, I've got to be careful with the cost. So we actually have a, a team, a big team behind me. So no one is employed on the payroll because I felt like um, where Kate was made redundant, as a new company, I wouldn't want that to be on me, uh, you know, because it's I can see the effects it would have. So we behind me, I've got loads of freelancers, loads of developers loads of contacts behind me. Behind me even further, with Nettle, we're part of Graffinia PLC. It's a bit like a franchise, but I use it as a subscription, so I can use their, their tools and services. So for example, they have one of the UK's largest, or European largest, printing hub. So I can do printing if I want to. Um, I can use their expertise and their specialities with other elements, like we can print on fabric, which loads of people can't do. So I've tried to layer it up so where people may see me or may see other people with me, it's actually they're not employed. I use them when we need to use them to form the team on that project because it was clear whereby you ask the client for the budget. If someone's got a small budget, we can manage it, but with the big clients, I'd be like, brilliant, we need X, Y, Z to form the team to then tackle that project. So we tried to do it as smart as possible as a business owner. Any other questions? <laughs> oh. Then that's it. No other, no, thank no you other so questions? Much. Okay. Well, you can find me at lunch by all yeah. means, and I can share some other tips as well. Thank you, Ricky. Oh, is there one more? Oh, one more. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, it was, yeah, definitely price because we had traffic because uh, the way we saw it was, hang on, I was doing my bit, I was getting traffic to the website, but Kate said, hang on, because her background was a buyer, it's like, no, Rick, it's too much. But as a business owner, I think, well, if it's priced here, we can make more profit and we can, it's what everyone else is doing. So literally the moment Kate suggested, that's why she told me to say it, it was her idea of the price, um, it transformed everything and it was go, 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 go. And it's something which I didn't even think about. I thought it's a nice website, we've got a good logo, it's mobile friendly, it's SSL, it's super fast, it does the job. Why are people not buying? That's how I thought. And it only took someone else to come along and actually, Rick, you, I, you want to do there, but really, it's just got to go down there a little bit. There's still loads of margin there as a business owner, and it's going to take, tick the boxes whereby it's boutique fashion at affordable prices. So it, that was the moment it transformed anything, everything. But it wasn't cheap. It was just moved down slightly on there as well. And then we kept the postage cost as the normal postage cost, which customers were happy to pay with. So yeah, that was that was that was the pinnacle moment that just transformed everything. Anyone else? Yeah. The, um, we get traffic, but it's a very small proportion. And if honest, I feel like we've cracked Facebook, hundred thousand lovely, and it powers it. Instagram, I find, is really hard, uh, really hard, in a sense that. 
it's not a problem to get likes. Like, 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 like. I don't want likes. We want people then to go to the website. Um, we're trying to look at different ways because we get all the parents sending pictures of their, their little daughters or sons of the clothing to use it that way. But it's still that same um, issue that, oh, I really want that. And then I need them to then do go to the bio to click the link to go to the website to buy it. So I do actually find Instagram really hard and I really do focus a lot on Facebook. We've got about, I think, 6,000 plus Instagram following. We're on Twitter, we're on Pinterest. We just do uh, marketing whereby the post we're doing is set out to all of them. Um, they all generate traffic, but it's actually Facebook that gives the, the pound at the end of the day. It is. Most of our traffic is through SEO, which is perfect. So if Facebook did shut down tomorrow, I don't know, it would. It's still fine. We've still got a sustainable business. It goes back to the philosophy I want to be mobile friendly with an SEO core because so many businesses, well, SEO is expensive long term, but once you're there, you're pretty much there, maintenance is fine, it powers it. Powers it on there as well, but Instagram's hard, I will admit that. Okay, that's all the time that we have. No, brilliant, thank you so Another much. Another warm, warm applause for Ricky. Oh, thank you very much, thank you. Thank you.